there's been a lot of requests for me to show how I do my tapestry. I took a class and I personally found it really easy to pick up. Tapestry weaving is a pretty ancient art form with very, very intricate and beautiful history. But more recently, the more popularized version of it is to use these techniques to make beautiful wall hangings. They add a lot of texture to the wall. They make everything look soft and serene. And also, they have been kind of a fun way for me to make use of sewing supplies that I already had left over. So I find it very forgiving on the quantity and odds and ends that you insert into it. Plus, they make for a pretty nice gift. The board that I just strung up for you all. These strings going up and down are the warp, and what we're going to be adding is called the weft. The strings going this way. This is a large size loom to help us work faster. I'm not going to use the full width of it so we can build progress faster. And I'll put a link in the description to some other videos that I found that show how you can make a loom very easily out of a picture frame or um, even, I remember as a kid, I did one out of just a piece of cardboard paper. The biggest tapestry weave that I made so far, I just used the two legs of my dining table. Flip that thing onto the side. This was one leg. This was one leg. And I strung it up. We tied a knot in this bottom corner and then went back and forth, up and down. And up here tied one more knot to secure it off and one thing that I was taught to do was kind of like give them a little tug after stringing it so that everything's nice and tight and there's just a little bit of bounce but not too much bounce. For this string you have to make sure you use string that does not stretch so a common one that can be easily found is butchers or kitchen twine that's the same stuff that you use to tie up some nice roasts and delicious things that you can cook in the oven. No stretch in it, so it's also good for weaving. Next you'll want to get some spare cardboard or something firm, and we're going to weave this over and under to the bottom of our entire setup. This helps to make sure that you have some leftover strings at the end in order to tie it all off and it's all going to disappear at the end. It's just a temporary placeholder. Another bonus to have is a long flat stick. This one is specifically for weaving, but as you can see, it looks a lot like a ruler. So a ruler would do just fine too, or even a kitchen spatula. <laughs> We're going to put this one in over and under as well, and it's going to help us create some space so that half the time it's a little bit easier to pass the thread through. Next up, we're gonna weave in the footer. So using the exact same butcher's twine, I'm gonna go back and forth for 12 rows in total. The way the rod helps is by twisting it, you can create a shed, which is the space in which the weft can go through. Once it's all the way over, we're just going to brush it down so it's all the way at the bottom. You can use your nails, but a hairbrush is even better. Now when you're going the opposite way, you want to be under where you were over before and over where you were under before. So we can only use the rod when we're going in one direction and we have to go string by string when we go the opposite direction. You never want to apply too much pressure when you're making these turns because if you squeeze too hard, your strings are going to start to slowly bunch together. So make sure there's always just barely enough breathing space and then brush it down. Now I'm going to go back and forth to make the 12 rows. Whenever starting and ending a string, don't use any knots. Just let them hang freely. I now have finished 12 rows in total. You can count six lumps here and six lumps here. And a fire alarm that's going off in my building. 
and that gives you 12. So this is just going to be a nice and secure footer for our tapestry. What we just did here is a plain weave, so every other string just goes over and under the previous string. That gets you this diamond pattern. And at the beginning of the end, there's no knots. Just make sure you leave about a two to three inch tail, and we're gonna secure all of those at the end. So using this fashion, you can change colors, you can start and stop wherever you like, now I'm going to show you how to swap out the colors and change it up. and that way there's no gap at all. What's gonna happen over here as I fill this up is that there is gonna be a gap here. Now, if you do too many of these gaps, it can damage the structural integrity of your weave, but at the same time, it can be strategic too because putting in a few gaps can be a nice artistic choice. And I'm gonna show you how to do a looped pile, which gives a really, really cute effect. So what you're gonna need for this is you need to establish at least three rows already, which we have done. This is so teacherly. Wingardium Leviosa, also a wand. You need to establish three rows minimum. I clearly have that already, and now I'm ready with the rest of this yarn. And so when we're moving across here, instead of just doing the plain weave, we're gonna create loops. I lay this chopstick over here. You can freehand this. You can use a really thick stick, whatever you please. I'm gonna go with this chopstick. Let's make a tight loop. We're gonna go through the neighboring string. That creates a loop. Tuck it underneath Then go through the next string. At some point, you can let go of the stick. Mm -hmm. Tuck it underneath. Then the next guy, oops, tuck it underneath. And now obviously, the harder that I tug on the stick, the bigger the loops are gonna be. So I'm just giving it a couple of tugs along the way to make sure that they're all even and they stay the same. So now we've created a first row of loop. And before we take out the chopstick, we need to do three rows above it to secure it in place. Brush, 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 brush. Now we're gonna pull out the chopstick. Voila, you've got a cute little loop. How cute is it? Some of you may realize that this is very rug-like and tapestry weaving technique is very similar to the technique, if not identical in many ways, to the technique used to make rugs. So this is with a chopstick's worth of pile, but you can make this even bigger or even finer if you use a different yarn. Cute. Now, not all tapestry weaving is nice and straight, neat rows, so let's add some shape to it. 
I have a bowl and I'm going to place it over this design and then just add some markings to try to create a circular shape. I have a green pen, hopefully will be invisible when we're done because it's also green. Last line of the green ends here, so we gotta start down here and work our way up to it. You always have to start at the lowest possible point, so this right here is the ditch. I'm gonna start there and work my way up and then start doing the curve. Let's begin. We're gonna insert that there, leave a tail, and then go over and under every other string. Because this is really thick, we're going to make progress on it really fast, which is great! Okay, now I'm going to show you sumac, which is a different weaving pattern, but it's one that has a lot of uses. Particularly, it looks really good in roving. It's like raw wool. It's used for felting, it can be spun into yarns, but when you buy it in its most uh, untouched form, this is what it is. Well, obviously this one's been dyed. You don't cut this, you just tear it, split it down the middle. So I'm gonna start right here. And again, you just leave a little bit of a tail at the back. Uh, so in sumac style, we're wrapping around every single string as we go. But sometimes when you're dealing with something so thick, that doesn't look as good. We're going to pass four and come back out the middle. Always tug lightly because you don't want to strain your tapestry. Pass four, come out the middle. That created this looped style that seems to go tuck under every single time. So depending on what direction you do this in, it can combine to look like one big braid. And I'll show you what I mean. Let me brush this guy down first. Leaving a little bit of a tail again. We're gonna go past four. But remember how last time I came out on top? This time you wanna come out below. Make sure it's not pulling too tightly. So we brush that down even out these strings a little bit, give them some room to breathe. And there you go, see? Because they went in opposite directions, combined, they look like one big braid. Here's where we're at as we reach the end of the day. I did some plain weave over here to raise it up. And then my plan, I've already drawn in the little lines, is to do one more circle. I feel like boop, 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 three lumps is a good look. It's a new day. There's no more fire alarms. And last night I worked my way up to flatten this out. So I did add this other circle, like I said, threw in another braid, threw in some more looped pile. It's just like this. And let's finish this off.
the last step here is to cut this free from the loom. So for that, we're just going to cut the first string. Then you place it over the next string, bring it under that same string, and then pull through and down. Cut this next one. We're going over, under, pull through, and and you want to keep things pretty consistent even though the tension of the tapestry is going to change because it's shifting. We're going over, under, and down. And there you go, here is the finished piece. You can always trim the fringe if you like. There was not too much that I covered, but actually with everything that I've covered here, you can make quite a few things. You can make this with some thicker yarns, some spare fabric, and even some trim. Or this, everything with nice and neat rows and still lots of color. And you can make this with more colors, more hill style, but every single type of weave I've covered in this. This is actually my first tapestry and there is a video for it. And that is the end of that. If you make a tapestry with this tutorial, don't forget to use hashtag madewithwendy. I can't wait to see them. Bye bye